Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to introduce the Etch Red rack extension for Reason. Um, this rack extension is a dual filter effect device. Um, it has um, some different distortions in it, it has compression, uh, it has a lot of different capabilities uh, involved inside it. Essentially, um, I'm just going to go through how the front panel works and a little bit on the back panel. Uh, so, just to show you the, the routing scheme, uh, when you apply it to an actual instrument, uh, it doesn't generate any sounds, it's just purely effects, and the routing scheme, it goes from the, um, from the distortion, or the drive, uh, into the filter 1, then into filter 2, and then to the output. And uh, the distortion can be turned on or off here just like filter 1 can be turned on or off, or filter 2 on or off. Um, you have seven different types of algorithms for different distortions or different drives. Um, and then in filter 1, you've got the input level knob for filter 1, you've got the frequency of filter 1, you've got the FM uh, frequency modulation, which means that you use an audio source to modulate the filter frequency, or um, by default you're using up here it says FM LFO you can either use, either use LFO 1 or LFO 2 to frequency modulate the, um, the frequency of the filter. Uh, you also have the resonance knob over here you have the panning knob over here um, and then for filter 2 you have the same type of parameters and then from there it goes into the output which um, is your compressor uh, by default, it's a soft knee compressor. If you click here, you've got the hard knee compressor. Um, and you've also got filter 1 output and filter 2 output, which is really nice because you can independently set the level of each of the filters. Then you've got the level knob, which is the overall level for the device. Uh, then you've got a mix knob, which is like your dry-wet knob. Um, if you go all the way fully left, uh, you're going to hear your original signal going into the device without any of the filters affecting it. If you go to 100%, you're going to hear only the filters affecting your sound. Um, the other nice thing is that you've got a post light up here, which is a switch to uh, send your distortion after the filters. Uh, so with the post drive turned on, it'll go. the routing will go from the filter 1 to filter 2, then to the distortion, then to the output. Um, with it off, it goes to the distortion first, then to filter 1, then to filter 2, then to the output. Um, the other nice thing is that the filters can be set up in series, um, and by default that's how they're set up. So that means that it goes from filter 1 to filter 2, and then to the output. If you click here for parallel, um, the filters both go in parallel to the output. So that's what that switch is for. Um, now the middle section is where things get a little tricky. Uh, this is what's called the modulation source selection section. And this gives you 10 different sources um, through which you can modulate each of these parameters. Um, so for instance, LFO1 is selected. So this, this is LFO1 settings and um, you can set uh, the five top source selections, you can set up all their parameters down here. Um, so if with LFO1 selected, you basically uh, click here to select each of your sources. Okay, so LFO1 is selected. I'm going to turn this to be um, one bar. And uh, then now let's turn our frequency down. I'll play it a little pattern here. Okay, you can see it can affect your frequency. Now, if you want to modulate it using LFO1, you simply turn this red knob underneath the filter frequency knob. That'll change your frequency. Um, you can change the polarity of the LFO. So you, right now it's um, unipolar, meaning it only goes one direction, upward. Set it to bipolar, and it goes both ways. thing is, um, and where this gets tricky is if you have filter, you have LFO1 affecting filter frequency, um, and let's check this so you can get the full effect. 
Now, if you have color mode 2 selected, change color mode 2's rate to 116, for example. So now you have two sources affecting one parameter. LFO1 is affecting filter frequency 1, and LFO2 is also affecting filter frequency 1. They're both affecting them at the same time. That's key. Um, and if you notice, LFO1 is turning red. Here, the, uh, the little LED turns red. That means that it's affecting one of the parameters. If we have LFO2 affecting the resonance, when we go back to LFO1, you'll see that oh, there's a little LED up above resonance as well. That means that this LFO2 is affecting the resonance. So that's what gets a little tricky, is that you can select any one of these 10 sources to affect any number of parameters up here, which um, makes this device incredibly um, incredibly fun, <laughs> and, uh, and it, it just encourages exploration in terms of different types of modulations. On pads, it's great because you can do a lot of like very slow, evolving pads. Um, using two different filters on the pads. You can also set it up and, and add another etch red underneath it and create four filters and you know go hog wild and completely nuts. Um, but essentially that's the way it works. Now to use the envelope section, um, this envelope over here, it's a little bit, uh, it's different because you need to have an actual gate signal for the envelope. So let me just turn all these parameters off. Let's go to the curve, let's turn this around, we'll send a curve signal into the gate, and that's what will be used for our envelope. So right now there's nothing going in, you can see the output is showing nothing, but if I set up a little curve, you'll see that the envelope will tr get triggered at the beginning. That's how, how hard it hits. Okay, you got your attack. Your hold will hold it. Okay, and the curve goes from um, a linear curve to a more exponential type. the way the envelope works. Um, you've also got the LFO. Um, this syncs the LFO or um, you can create it, have it free flowing. Um, so let's just have the LFO one affecting the filter frequency. Let's so that's free running. That's synced to the tempo. The nice thing is that these parameters are remembered. Just switch back and forth. With mod or the morph or the pulse width modulation um, affects um, essentially uh, how wide or how narrow the cycle of the LFO is. Uh, phase is where the cycle of the LFO starts, um, and uh, then your gain is how strong or how um, or how shallow the signal. Um, it's like kind of like a trim knob for for um, the LFO. Then the LFO two has the same parameters. Um, the follower has an attack, a decay, and a level. Um, the level on the follower is essentially, um, 
how do I explain this? Okay, the level, if it's at 100%, the level, the follower's input is 100%, but you can reduce the actual input for the follower. The gain is the output for the follower. That's kind of the way I think of it. Um, and it's also got a high pass filter, which you can turn on or off. Um, the sample and hold is another one of those interesting parameters. It has an internal noise generator associated with it to use as kind of like a random um, modulation source. So let's uh, turn this down again. Let's play it. Let's take the sample and hold. And you can hear it's very random. respect you can actually have um, a single source um, like the sample and hold um, affect its own gain and its own rate um, or you can have different parameters like the LFO1 affecting the sample and holds rate and gain um, so in that respect you can create a lot of different variations and some very complex modulations so I hope that gives you a good introduction to what etch red is all about um, and uh, I hope you come visit me back at my own site at reason101.net and I will show you much more in terms of uh, some new rack extensions coming down the pipe and uh, hopefully I can keep up with uh, with as many as possible but uh, that's Etch Red in a nutshell and uh, it's great for all kinds of things from dubstep bass to um, to different kinds of stereo wideners um, tremolo effects vibrato effects um, compression, distortion, all kinds of fun stuff. So again, I'm Rob. Come visit me at reason101.net and uh, thanks for watching.